Uh, these are the, uh, the states. Uh, we mentioned that there were 11 states that were uh, looking at this, and uh, there they are. Uh, and the big one, of course, is uh, California. Uh, Rick mentioned Arizona. Uh, but if you look at them, uh, those are states that uh, potentially uh, uh, Bernie Sanders could win. Uh, Vermont is where he's from, and that was one of the points that he was making, and that is that if you overlay kind of liberal uh, democratic on it, uh, you would get a, a, um, uh, a pattern of uh, where it's, it's likely uh, that uh, legalization uh, could uh, flow to. Uh, this shows the, uh, this is a, again from the class that took place the other day, it's a, a pew poll uh, that shows those lines crossing over on the uh, uh, right hand side and then the, uh, the poll below is a Gallup poll, uh, both <laughs> of them going into the 50s. Uh, wh what it shows is the, uh, uh, that we're now at about 53%, 55% uh, <laughs> of the public in general being in favor of that. Well, what that means is probably at, at half the public is below, and some of it is dramatically below. And what would those states be? Well, southern states and midwestern states and more conservative states, um, uh, at, at least at the moment. Uh, uh, Rick made the point of uh, a diffusion of this, but nonetheless, um, uh, that's uh, it, and it also shows uh, stronger patterns um, in uh, in other states. Uh, would will Vermont pass a statute? Uh, absolutely. I'm not sure if you can see that, but what it shows is that uh, this is using that. Uh, 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 Gallup data, which uh, the last uh, Gallup poll showed 58% of the public, which is the, uh, uh, the item on the far uh, right there, uh, is 58%. And under it, millennials, uh, people under 34 years old, 71%. Gen X, under 50, 64%. Uh, baby boomers, uh, I, it, here it's uh, 64, but that roughly 69, but right in that age group, 58%, uh, so still above uh, the um, uh, mean, uh, still above 50%. And then finally, uh, the silent generation, our, our uh, parents and grandparents and others, uh, at, the, uh, at 35%. So that, uh, obvious, uh, uh, one of Rick's points is that as the millennials move into the electorate, and uh, become part of the um, uh, uh, body public, if they don't change their opinions, then more than likely we're going to see uh, more legalization. Uh, we, we mentioned that, uh, and the drivers are socially liberal, uh, public opinion by and large uh, uh, being uh, uh, favorable to it, demographics uh, such as young voters. Um, medical and decriminalization setting up a pattern. Uh, those states that have medical uh, marijuana are much more likely to have uh, uh, legalized uh, or be states that uh, I think were, are more likely to have uh, recreational legalized. Uh, it, it, one reason why it happens in these small western states is we have incredibly easy ballot access uh, or we, where with money we can get on the ballot. Uh, but uh, that's one of the things that encourages a, a lot of creative. Uh, right now we have 100 ballot initiatives that have been filed in Colorado, and more than likely we'll go to 150 or maybe 200. Uh, some of them quite bizarre and some of them uh, quite good, but in any event, we'll have a lot of them. Economic benefits uh, are talked about a great deal. Uh, I, Rick made the billion dollar um, uh, case. Uh, and then uh, uh, media coverage. Uh, the Denver Post is incredibly proud of their coverage uh, of uh, marijuana. Their, their main reporter um, is uh, uh, well recognized around the country uh, and they have taken uh, the lead on it. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, but regulate it uh, like alcohol, like medicine, uh, has an economic benefit. And uh, Rick pointed out that's, an, that's also another regulatory benefit when you talk about that. Uh, crime, uh, Mitch uh, addressed uh, whether or not there is any really redirection, but that is an argument that's made. It uh, allegedly re uh, reduces uh, drug crime uh, and street crime. And then there's uh, the one thing that is out there, and that is that there is a strong sort of libertarian, individualistic uh, movement out there. Uh, it's partially reflected in the in the uh, in the Trump and the uh, uh, some of the other dialogue that's going on right now uh, out there. And uh, Western states are particularly um, uh, amenable to it. We don't know the health risks. Uh, could be addictive. Um, 
uh, dangers for children and their development, uh, uh, don't need more intoxication, uh, economic costs, Mitch talked about that, homelessness, which was sort of surprising to me, but I've read a couple things recently on, again, young people coming out thinking they're going to work in the industry or just, in fact, want to be around other people uh, and, and enjoy the marijuana and uh, end up being homeless. And then the one thing I spend a lot of time on is that's commercialization. And that is to say that when you link it up to capitalism, it's going to do what we do in capitalism, and that is it's going to increase use. It's going to increase advertising. Uh, I know at the state capitol right now, we have somebody in our class that just gave a lecture on it, and I said, are there a lot of lobbyists down at the uh, Denver right now doing lobbying? She said, you can't believe the number of lobbyists uh, that have been retained partially or fully uh, to represent the marijuana industry uh, to help the industry uh, get um, uh, more uh, potentially um, uh, smoking clubs, um, uh, be able to smoke outside on patios. Uh, they are starting to spend money on campaigns, although some politicians are still reluctant, um, and uh, obviously uh, advertising has started. So roll out or uh, stall. Uh, people like uh, the sentiment. Uh, they like the idea of freedom. They like the idea that uh, Rick uh, pointed out. It was something not working about this um, and a sense that we had to try another approach because it all got tied up into the war on drugs. Mitch would argue that there really wasn't a war against small possession of marijuana, but it didn't matter. It, it by and large, got uh, pulled together in a, sort of one a rhetorical exercise. What they don't like is the proximity. You ask neighbors what they think about having more growth shops, uh, more, or, uh, uh, more dispensaries, more retail, um, and they will say they don't. Uh, and so consequently, as I mentioned to you, there's many uh, jurisdictions here that have uh, either limited uh, or um, uh, limited it or eliminated. Uh, commercialization and normalization expands, so I expect that's pulling on one side. Revenue and jobs is an argument on one side. My hometown of, of Pueblo um, has a lot of jobs related to it, uh, but Mitch pointed out lots of social costs, and by and large at the moment we're not calculating them yet. They're just sort of out there, uh, and at some point I assume we'll, we'll pull them together in, in good research. Uh, experience, the one thing I would say about experience, and uh, Denver uh, is the place that's experiencing it the most dramatically, and that is its adaptive management. Uh, Denver is doing everything it can, as brightly as it can, intelligently as it can, to try and manage what is now legal here. Uh, whether you are in favor of it or not in favor of it as a politician or as a, as a district attorney, uh, you're dealing with it. So we're getting a lot of adaption as to what's going on, um, and uh, that probably helps in many ways, but it also produces what ultimately will be some costs we can look at. Um, and it'll it produce, uh, uh, as uh, other places in the country try, uh, they'll look at us um, as a model to avoid uh, or possibly adopt. Uh, and finally, I put up uh, that there is, uh, there is resistance in conservative parts of states uh, and the country. How much resistance? Well, it's not like MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. I don't see that level of organization. But on the other hand, we may. Who knows uh, whether we will or uh, uh, whether we will or not. Uh, so finally, uh, definitely expansion. I'm going to go with expansion, uh, but I think there's still a watching and waiting going on in a lot of jurisdictions. Obviously, if they hear a, a presentation from Mitch, you watch and wait a little bit more uh, because you definitely would like to see some of this data and, and see if they can, uh, the, th these jurisdictions uh, can adapt appropriately. Uh, there is some active resistance, but in my opinion, how much active resistance? Will it reverse uh, in uh, Colorado? Uh, it's just a plug problem. Uh, will it reverse in Colorado? I don't think so. Will, is, will some jurisdictions that currently have it in Colorado reverse? Could they possibly uh, eliminate it or limit it? Um, possible, uh, but we don't see it yet. Uh, and we would see a tremendous effort to keep it by the industry. Uh, so uh, I think that we're, we're uh, it's, uh, it's not a stall, I definitely, but I don't think it's a rollout. Uh, I definitely think that we're, we're moving in a direction, and, uh, and Rick uh, pointed out that we should watch it, uh, watch it interestingly as a public policy uh, issue uh, over the next four years because uh, it's definitely on the table in a lot of jurisdictions.